Hey there friend, future Sarah here. Welcome to part two of my trip to Marco Island. If you haven't seen already, I have a part one that I can't stop watching. I think I've watched it like 50 times at this point, the Gen Chase one, been watching that on repeat as well. Um, just to kind of catch you up as to where we are. So I had just got done with the second coherence healing and I'm gonna talk about what had happened during the healing, the amazing magic that ensued with an amazing gentleman that I was that was in my my group it was really incredible I felt no emotion until something between me and him happened gosh the rest of this there's so many synchronicities in the rest of this video it's, it's stuff that happened after the retreat which is pretty phenomenal I absolutely love making these videos I love traveling I love doing it like this style it feels so intimate I wanted to hug past Sarah so badly watching this for like the fifth time just because there's just so much emotion in here and she was just feeling a type of way uh, so anyway, I will keep this super short because the video is already over like a half hour long. Um, if you wish to support these videos and me and me with traveling because I want to keep doing more of these, uh, head over to ko-fi.com slash hey there friend. Everything and anything is greatly appreciated beyond belief. And please hit that like and subscribe button. We're trying to hit a thousand before October 21st because that's when it's been a year that I've officially been on YouTube. And then I don't know what happens after that. I don't know if I can apply to be monetized again, but we'll see when that happens. Anyway, so if you wouldn't mind, hit that subscribe button. And yeah, without further ado, here's part two of my trip to Marco Island. Be prepared because there's a lot of magic and synchronicity that's uh, <laughs> about to be told. I'll see you guys on the other side. Hey there, friend. I just got done with the walking meditation and holy hell, uh, that and the coherence healing was absolutely insane. You, know, you can't really see me, it poured. My hair is disgusting. I'll show you at some point what that looks like. But my coherence healing was insane. I had this message of you can forgive, but you also have to be able to heal your body of the trauma. And I was able to let go of pieces of my trauma with my dad through a man named Christian, who was amazing. And I told him we were bonded for life. The group that I had was insane and they made me feel so safe, which is what I needed more than anything that was that contributed to my personal healing. And then we came out here to do our walk. It was awesome. Oh. Uh, another thing too was I sobbed hysterically on this poor man's shoulder. I was fine up until it came time to give everybody hugs and then I just I fucking lost it. I told him I'm so sorry. I literally was, was crying on his shoulder for a good while. <laughs> but he supported me. He told me he loved me and I will never forget that man's embrace and what he told me. And we just did the walking meditation outside and the sky opened up and it was pouring and it felt so liberating and I was crying. I told my friend Jen Chase that we should try finding each other. I said this to her before the walk. And I was like, let's let our hearts find one another. She's like, all right, I'm game. So we went out, did our walk. And we were doing our thing. I stopped and I connected to my, or no, I didn't stop. I stopped and I did the breath for the second time. And then came time to walk again. And I thought to myself, which way do I turn? Do I go left or do I go right? And I was like, meh. I'll go right. I heard a voice in my head say both paths are the right path, but I went right. And then I turned and I look and who did I run into? Gen Chase. And it was amazing. There you go. This is what I look like. I got soaked. So she said, so I said, I'm going to go to the right in my head. So she totally came and embraced me and I told her, dude, I just got to the point where I was told to walk and I stopped and I asked myself, for which way do I turn, left or right? And I didn't feel pull in either direction. So I was like, and I heard a voice in the back of my head say, no matter which direction you go, it's the right one. So I was like, okay, here we go. So I turned and went to the right and I immediately turned to the right and all of a sudden I see Jen Chase come walking straight to me and I'm like, oh my God. And she just opens up her arms and we embrace. And it was amazing. And she says, it just feels like I just took ecstasy. It was hysterical. And then I told her, I was like, you know what just happened? My meditation. Literally, I was just told to move. And she stopped. And she's like, oh my god, me too. And we laughed. I fell to the ground. And a couple of people were watching and were laughing too. And it was really funny. It was a great experience. The sky opened up. And it just felt like a rebirth. 
as soon as I started walking in this meditation, all I kept thinking to myself was, nobody has any trauma, nobody has any pain, there's no more trauma, there's no more pain for me or for anybody, and I started to cry, and it was amazing, and it was so freeing, and I just feel so free, and I'm really excited for this life that I just stepped into, because I'm in a life right now where there's no pain and there's no trauma, and I'm going to keep up with this for ever. This is the new reality, no more pain, no more trauma, and that's that. Oh my goodness, I need to go shower, I'm going to go meet my friends for dinner, I'm so excited, I am covered in sand and rain. All right, friend, until next time. All right, so we're on the last day. We just did the walking meditation. We did another really awesome brand new meditation this morning, which was a lot of fun, but I came out of it feeling rather cranky. I had to retreat to my room afterwards because I was just feeling a type of way. Lots and lots of anger came up. Lots of thoughts that I didn't want came up. So I had to sit and deal with them, but we've kind of worked through that a little bit, hopefully. It's so beautiful. There, it looks like there's storms starting to come over back in the distance over there. Yeah. Anyway, so we're about to go into, I think, another coherence healing. This is going to be my third one. Like I had said yesterday, yesterday's was really powerful. Oh God, me and that gentleman, Christian, <laughs> I told him we're bonded for life now. I saw him during the walking meditation and he smiled at me and it was just so, so loving. It felt so incredible. And like, I, I don't have words for this man. He just, what he did for me without even knowing it, like, I, just thinking about that hug, ah, oh, it's gonna live in my heart for the rest of my life. I get, I get teary-eyed thinking about it, which I love. I need that. So, I will give an update as the day goes on, hopefully. It's hard to find alone time, which is why I haven't really been making these updates. I'm not really one for kind of talking about this stuff in public. <laughs> so, but yeah, stuff's moving, energy's moving. I can't wait to see what the third coherence healing is going to bring forth. Also, something really funny, my sister got a picture of, uh, someone must have been leaning against the elevator after the rainstorm that we had yesterday, because of course it poured, and we we did, we lie down. We still did the, the lie down part of the meditation, and I guess the elevator must have been packed, and somebody left a butt print on the wall in the elevator and it's actually kind of really funny so all right until until after the third coherence healing see you guys on the other side hey there friend welcome back my name is sarah and i am taking my name badge off for the last time i'm totally not getting choked up about it right now Today was a day. It was such a day. It was such a good day. But there's a lot of magic that happened after everything. Sorry. We're gonna come down. We got this. Breathe, breathe. Okay. Anyway, so the last coherence healing was awesome. It was really, really cool. I got to keep the blanket. I told my people who healed me that I'm going to hold on to that blanket when I have my night terrors and my awful dreams about, you know, my dad coming back and everything. And I'm going to know that. And we got this. Breathe. <laughs> that their energy will be with that blanket. I'll just keep thinking of that dome of energy that's, you know, around me that I had today. It's very peaceful, very calming. Oh, I told them that I apologize that I didn't have any, like, you know, cool movements and stuff like that. I just felt calm and at peace. It was what I needed. Sorry, trying to work through this. So, the rest of the day just got better and better as it went along. I had set the intention to find four people and I found, he found me, I guess five people. When everything was done, I needed to find this woman, Maria, because I wanted to take a picture of, with her. She's the one that taught me how to dance. It was teaching me how to dance. She was my 79 year old. So I had to 
run downstairs, do my cheek swabs after the uh, healing. And I did. And I did it in record time. It's really funny. I ran upstairs because I needed to take a group picture with all my friends. And I got up to the picture and she <laughs> up to the place where we were taking pictures. And she was just like, oh my god, I was just thinking about you. I was telling everybody that I needed to find you and you found me. So she brought me in. And then we got pictures. It was awesome. Then I said to myself, I need to find my friend Greg. I need to find Christian. And I needed to find Cody. I also wanted to find this other woman who I know through working with Positive Head. And... I just set the intention and I went about the rest of my day and I told my friends Kim, Jackie, and Jen Chase that I needed to run back to my room because I had to process some stuff real quick physically. My stomach was absolutely killing me. I ran back here and I dropped my stuff off and then got myself situated and then I looked at my bag and I was like, I'm going to grab four unicorns and I know that I have to give these four unicorns out. So, I put them in my pocket, and then I beelined it, because Jen Chase had to go, because she was driving back home, she wasn't staying. And I put the unicorns in my pocket, and I ran back to the elevator. I got out of the elevator, and I ran into someone who knew me from YouTube, and I was like, you found me, here's a unicorn. So I gave them a unicorn, and it was awesome, it was a great interaction, and then I ran into another friend of mine who I had sat next to on I think it was, the, it was the second day that we had, like, a full day. And it was so great to see them and talk with them. And they were saying that they are going to be on YouTube, too. Except they're going to be doing testimonials. And I was like, damn right you are. And then I kept walking. And then I ran into another friend of mine who's really awesome. I believe his name is Al. And I gave him a unicorn because he was saying he was going to subscribe to me. Because every time he saw me, he'd give me a big hug. And he'd be like, hey, YouTuber. And I was like, yeah, that's me. We exchanged numbers real quick, and then as I was walking along, and this is the all span from the elevator all the way up to the conference hall, I saw my friend Natalie, and I got to see her, and I got to see her baby Vega, and we were just, you know, saying hey, and, and exchanging hugs, and just like, you know, we'll keep in touch, because she lives near me, and it was really awesome, and then as that was all happening, I was thinking to myself, I need to find Christian, <laughs> and as I'm walking up towards the ballroom steps, I see him. And I'm like, hey, hey, Christian, hey, hey. And I go running after him. And I'm like, I have to give you something. And he like stops me. He realizes it's me. And I'm like, I literally called you with my heart to this spot because I needed to give you this. And I pulled out a unicorn and I gave it to him. And I said that I want you to have this because I, I don't want you to forget what you did for me. And every single time I have those awful thoughts of stuff with my dad. I'm gonna think back to that interaction that we had. And he hugged me and he told me he loved me. And it was just awesome. I saw him getting teary eyed too. I don't think he'll forget that. I know I won't. And then I got a text message immediately after that from Jen Chase saying, Hey, your friend with your cowboy friend is up here because I was meeting them on the I was meeting them someplace. And I was like, I needed to find him. And at this point, I had one unicorn left, which was perfect. Um, I gave Greg a unicorn already, but I got to go up there and I got my picture with Greg. And it was amazing. Uh, I got to sit and chat with him and his wife. And it was just such a great conversation. We talked about horses. And then afterwards, Jen left. I got to give a big hug to her. We've got a video together that I'm going to be posting on Wednesday. It was really great to talk with her. And, uh... I went down to dinner at a different location with my other friends and we were just sitting there chatting. I got to meet a couple of really awesome new people. It was really cool. And as we were about to leave, we saw people from the tree. I heard Jackie go, oh, hey. And I look behind me to see who it is. It's Cody. And I jump up. So previously in the ocean, probably should have mentioned this before, I told Cody that I was going to give him a unicorn because I, I met him and his friend Lizzie in the ocean. I said that I'm a YouTuber and I said that I wanted to give him a unicorn because, you know, it's just what I do. It's my thing. I give out unicorns. And I didn't know where he was and I saw him a bunch of times today and I should have stopped to give him one, but 
I just didn't think to. And uh, I stopped, I jumped up and I was just like, Cody, I found you, I drew you to me. He was just like, it was so funny. I think he got a kick out of it. So I gave him the unicorn and it was just, it was an awesome exchange. It was an awesome interaction. <laughs> And you can't make this stuff up. So then we were joking. We we're just like, all right, we're gonna be. I'm gonna be drawing a million dollars to me next. That's the next thing that we're doing. <laughs> oh my god. But like, it's so much magic. And I didn't even do anything. I just showed up. And I guarantee tomorrow morning I'm gonna find that other person that I'm looking for. I'm guarantee it. Um, one of my healers also gave me this really awesome bracelet. It was Laura and Lily. That's the company. I thought it was so sweet of her. She wrote on my paper, "I have a gift for you." So nice. What a day. Oh, the worst part of this retreat is when you're still here. People have left at this point. The elevators are all empty. The hallways are all empty. Or they're filled with people who are sleepy people. You look at wrists, they don't have the wristbands. People don't have name tags on. It's like you get thrown back into reality and I know the magic doesn't stop here but it's like it just sucks we my mom and I just got back from getting ice cream on like the fifth floor or whatever and like seeing like the empty ballroom how there's no people hanging around all the stuff's been taken down it's just one of those things you know just trying to keep this feeling going and alive Sorry, there's snot everywhere. Like, I can't, I can't help this. Like, I can't control this. This is just how I'm feeling right now. Remember, I don't cry. <laughs> yeah, hello. Hi, vulnerable. My name is Sarah Rusk. But knowing that these moments can be created again, and it's not the empty hallways, the empty elevators, the empty stairs, the lack of wristbands and name tags, that the magic can come back again that we are here to keep the magic alive and to keep the magic going no matter what future Sarah is going to be like oh god why <laughs> so much snow on my nose but my trip still isn't over there's a bunch of us that are still here we're going to get up we're going to do a walking meditation at 6 o'clock in the morning I can't wait I have the option to sleep in but I am not I've got you know the rest of my days to do that but yeah so I just wanted to share how the last bit of my day went. Sorry I couldn't get a lot more video in. It was just hard because there's just a lot of people around. And it was hard to kind of like, I don't feel comfortable talking about this stuff in public. So, yeah. I will probably hop on here again tomorrow morning after the walking meditation. And then, and then put something together again as like a closer thing when I get home or something or I'll put in some stuff the trap but yeah so this was my last day it was epic and i can't wait to see oh there's one more thing i was two more things well we went to go get ice cream i was watching a movie where there was a movie playing and it said space invaders and right next to the tv screen was space invaders the actual game in the arcade and then as we were walking out there's a wall that had unicorns as prizes which I thought was so awesome. So yeah, this trip is a dig with a bang. Can't wait to see what like my everyday life is gonna be like now. <laughs> Sorry for crying, God. I don't get emotional, but yeah, that's a friend. I will come back out again tomorrow morning. So yeah, until then, I'll see you tomorrow, friend. I gotta go wash my face. One other thing I forgot to mention, which I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but I keep joking around with everybody saying that I own this hotel that the W in JW Marriott stands for Sarah, except the W in my name is silent, so it's spelled W-S-A-R-A-H, <laughs> because people were like, oh, dude, does anybody know where this is? And I'm like, oh, I do, I've been here before. And I like tell everybody where everything is. And uh, so I, I literally told 50 people that I own this hotel. Yeah, so that was another joke from this week. So I apparently own part of the JW <laughs> Marriott brand, specifically this hotel, just so you know. It's so empty in these halls. It makes me so sad. There's no one waiting here. No 
nobody. not seeing a big swarm of people walking towards the beach at like 5.50 in the morning. My heart's like breaking a little bit right now. this morning. It was so great because I was alone when I started and I was in a sea about a hundred of us left. So, <sighs> time to say goodbye to the hotel. Huh? Last elevator. Almost our last elevator ride. friend welcome back I am home in my office woohoo I had a few more amazing things things happen to me um in the airport I ran into more people and it, there's more stories just unfold um I'm gonna share them I'm gonna kind of wrap everything up and then I'm gonna do one final like last kind of thing because there's just so much to talk about and unpack here um but I just wanted to film this super quickly before I eat dinner I have a up, booting up both my computers. I have a really long night ahead of me. So um, we left the hotel. I was super sad. I am going to miss it so much. I can't believe it feels like it was like lifetimes ago that I was there and not this morning. Oops. Um, so we got to the airport, waited around and everything, and I kept checking people's wrists just in case I'd see, you know, our, our wristbands on anybody and we were sitting over by the terminal to go back to Newark and I saw this beautiful woman with blonde hair like standing by one of the poles and I was just admiring her outfit I was like man that's really cute I wish I could wear something like that and I looked at her wrist and I saw pink on there I was like oh my god she was at the retreat and I'm like how did I not see her and it was just really cool she there was another guy that walked up next to her and then all of a sudden i saw a woman that i recognized she was um hanging out with my friend kim that i made and i had talked to her a couple of times she's a piano teacher and she was just really sweet she was always um waiting in line at like 4 30 in the morning to get in it was really cute so i walked up to her and i said hello and i just wanted to you know just say i wish her safe travels and everything she was headed back to dc and we chatted a little bit and then i went to go back walk back to my seat and I sat and then they called us to board our flight and we're standing in line and then I feel somebody um tap my shoulder and I look over and it's the, the beautiful blonde lady and I look at her and she was just like I just saw you talking to that that woman and she's at the retreat and I you know were you at the retreat and I showed her my my wristband and she was like oh my gosh and I was like yeah and we you know gave her a big hug and everything and we were talking and she said that you know she had a great time and she wishes that her kids would get involved in this work so I stopped, as naturally I would. I went into my bag. I pulled out my baggie of unicorns and I held it open. She's like, what's this? And she looked in and she kind of got a little teary-eyed and she was just like, I gotta tell you something. And I was like, what's up? And she said, I think it was her grandfather had passed away and she brought his ashes to spread into the water in Marco Island or, or someplace, I think it was Marco Island. Um, and she said that she was looking for a sign from him. 
and she told me a story that one day he just kind of randomly wandered off and he came back and he had a patch on his arm and they're like what's that patch we're like what do you got there and he pulled it off and it was a tattoo and you'll never guess what the tattoo was of it was a unicorn so we talk about divine timing right after the retreat where we weren't even on the property anymore and mystical things were happening so we got to talking we're both from new jersey we're gonna you know we exchange numbers and everything she's a beautiful 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 soul great energy her name is jen i have an abundance of jens in my life i absolutely love it she is just so nice and it was really funny uh, we checked our bags because we had a rather full flight which we normally don't do and when we got back to, to Newark, we went downstairs to go get our luggage and I saw Jen standing there and she's like, I just texted you. And I was like, haha, my, your heart drew my heart to you. And we just had a great little conversation and it was just, it was so wonderful. Very, very lovely to talk to her and to meet her. Um, the walking meditation that I did this morning was absolutely beautiful. My favorite and probably the best walking meditation I did this entire week. It wasn't even with the retreat. Um, I know I recorded a little bit in the elevator beforehand, but I was really sad because the hallways were empty and the elevators were empty. Oh God, I'm gonna start crying. Not again. <laughs> uh, walking out, there was like, you know, a couple of, of our people scattered throughout the darkness. And when I started, I was alone facing the ocean. And when it came time to lift our eye shades for the first time and open our eyes, I looked around and I saw that there was at least like 50 other people standing around. So it my heart felt connected to to those people standing there and then more and more people started to come out and by the time the meditation was over there's probably close to 100 of us left and it was really cool just to to see everybody i got to see a couple more friends i was looking for my friend manny that was one of the last people that i needed to find and i found him and it was awesome more heart to heart connections the sunrise this morning i'll show a picture it was absolutely breathtaking it was so beautiful the pastel colors were so amazing but yeah i literally got home and i haven't stopped i went to go see abigail i got to catch up with julie a little bit i literally just shy took charlie for a walk i immediately got home and stuff started to kind of unravel and i'm like nope we're not doing this i wrote down a whole bunch of different things that i'm working on to keep myself you know focused in here i have so many things that i want to talk about <laughs> i have so many videos that I want to share with all. I, I took 27 pages worth of notes, which was insane. There's a lot of um, full circle things that have kind of come together between people that I had reconnected with that I met in Marco Island the first time. Amazing things that just, this trip was just incredible. So unbelievable. I'm so excited to go back. I'm working on manifesting a ticket into Tennessee. I know that they're open, but I'm working on manifesting the abundance to be able to pay to go to and stay in Tennessee in October. And I know it's going to happen. So, all right, I'm going to eat my dinner super quickly, get the podcast up and rolling. And then I've got pictures to edit, but I will hop on and do an official closing of this with my thoughts and some other stuff before I post this tonight. So stay tuned for the future, 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 Sarah, because this present version of Sarah is starving and ate a bagel at like seven o'clock this morning and that's it so yeah i'm gonna go eat i'll catch you guys in a little bit hey there friend so i was gonna do some kind of like formal outro thing but i kind of like this whole like talking into my phone vibe so you're gonna make breakfast with me while i close out this video so oh no <laughs> all right nose ring has been fixed so it is wednesday i've been home for two full days and i feel so good. I don't feel like super over the top high like I did coming home from San Diego. Marco Island, I was sick. So that doesn't even like, that, that, that doesn't count. Um, but I feel really good. I have a really bad headache today. Um, when I got home from Marco Island, I immediately went over to the barn, like I had said uh, a little bit earlier in the part before this. Um, and I was up until 3.30 in the morning making videos, editing pictures, and doing stuff for the Positive Head podcast. So I literally didn't stop. Um, but the thing is, like, I don't feel fatigued. I don't feel tired. Even last night, like, I was up until about 12, and I had to be up at, like, 8 to go take care of the horses. Um, I feel fine. Like, I don't feel exhausted. I just hit the snooze button a couple of times, but it wasn't, like, that draining, like, ugh, oh my god type of feeling. 
Um, like I said, just my head hurts today. Uh, I have been meditating every day. I've literally been, I'm not going to tell you which meditations I've been doing because that's not the point. That's not the point at all. Um, the point is I want to keep this feeling going and I don't want it to stop. I've been going for walks with Charlie and Bailey. I just got back from one and I've been listening to a whole bunch of different interviews and stuff that Dr. Joe has done. School of Greatness was the one that I was just listening to um, about like abundance and everything. And it's not about the meditation. It's about keeping yourself in this frame of mind with who do you want to be? Who do you want to be? <laughs> who do you want to be when you open your eyes? My eyes are open sometimes. And I want to be this amazing, inspiring, abundant person. So I am doing things that are causing me to be an inspiring, abundant person. I just applied for a travel credit card because I am going to Tennessee and I'm excited about how that's going to unfold. Even though in the other video, <laughs> literally the couple of days before, I was like, I'm going to manifest abundance, go to Tennessee. Fuck that. I'm going to Tennessee. I don't know how. I don't know how I'm going to make it work, but I'm going to Tennessee because why not? Um, so yeah, that's how I've been going about doing this. I am going to do other little chunks of videos after this because I'm going on vacation again. <laughs> We're going back to the beach. I totally forgot I was going to the beach, so I've, I'm gonna fill in some videos before I go. So I, cause it's for all my new subscribers. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all my subscribers. I hit 445 last time I checked. I'm so mad I didn't see 444. The 400th and the 400th and 44th person who subscribed, you're amazing. Thank you. Same thing with number 222. I love those numbers. I love all my numbers. I love all of you guys. So we're gonna keep on keeping on. I'm excited to keep this this train rolling. Um, yeah. So, friend, with that being said, I'm going to eat my egg. I also, uh, I got the death sentence from my chiropractor. I went to go see him yesterday. He told me I'm not allowed to have coffee anymore. I'm kind of upset about that, but I also totally get that. Like, I'm still kind of, like, puffy and my face is breaking out quite a bit. Um, but he gave me a list of food that I'm not supposed to have. Green tea is on that, too. I love green tea. I'm kind of bummed about that one. So, Yeah. It means I gotta cut back on my Duncan runs, which is fine. Anything for my body. He said that energetically, I feel so good. When I got back from Marco the first time, I was like all over the place. But he said this is the best energetically that I've felt structurally. We're working on it. So, all right, friend, until next time, just promise me you'll keep singing. Okay, friend?